Industry 4.0, also known as the fourth industrial revolution, has brought significant transformations in the manufacturing sector over the years, introducing smarter systems, efficient connectivity, and scalable innovations, all thanks to groundbreaking technologies. With the emergence of technologies like generative AI, a new phase of disruption is unfolding. To discuss some of the risks and opportunities emerging in this evolving landscape, we have with us Sundareshwar Krishnamurthy, Partner, Risk Consulting, PwC India, and Saurabh Prakash, Head, Audit and Assurance at Hero Motorcom. Thank you for joining us on the show, gentlemen. Uh, I'll start off uh, right away with you, uh, Sundar. Uh, as a consultant who talks to so many people across the you know, spectrum of companies, we are talking of Industry 4.0 right now. The, how do you and your clients see the whole gamut of risks as far as the manufacturing sector is concerned? Sure. Thanks, Saurabh. So, if you really look at it, uh, you know, Industry 4.0 and automation, um, we can really dissect it in terms of pre-COVID and post-COVID. Yes, sir. And pre-COVID, uh, when you went and asked a client, what do they really mean by Industry 4.0 and automation? Uh, the two words that usually came out was around we want to attain cost leadership and we want to be more efficient. Uh, you know, we run a survey every other year with manufacturers and what the survey told us post pandemic is that the word industry 4.0 and automation uh, is now uh, very, very related to resiliency and flexibility as opposed to efficiency and cost leadership. And in that context, if you dig a little deeper, most of this is powered by digital transformation. And uh, when one builds a digital backbone for uh, you know, a manufacturer, uh, there are three kinds of risks that they need to uh, really watch out for. The first is, you know, given the fact that everything will get interconnected and you generate a lot of data uh, that you use for research and insights and planning and decision making, cybersecurity risks become very, very uh, relevant. The second one is if you plug in a lot of technology, right, to automate uh, many processes, your workforce who's working in the in the plant, uh, most of them are blue collar workers, they probably don't understand how to use technology. And that can be prone to a lot of errors. And errors in a manufacturing setup or in a factory is, uh, is actually catastrophic. So that's the second risk, which is in terms of skilling of the workforce to be able to leverage technology as opposed to be bound by, you know, probably getting scared of technology. That's the second one. And the third one, which we all realized during COVID is around supply chain, right? Uh, you know, what one realized is as an organization, uh, you are bound and you are related to the events that are happening in the world. Uh, whether it's geopolitical, whether it is water, whatever is happening in Europe, uh, whether it's to do with economic uh, pressures uh, that are there. And those pressures really have an impact on the way you really deal with uh, your supply chain vendors. And you need to plan to make sure that outages at their end don't really impact your operation. So largely, I would put it in these, these three buckets. But you know, sort of the interesting part is organizations who really go back to the drawing board and rethink risk at the beginning of a transformation exercise are able to identify opportunities for change and embrace these risks and manage them better as opposed to organizations who face it and then have to deal with it. Right? So that's really uh, you know what's panning out in the industry. For. So proactive rather than reactive obviously is the name of the game at this point. Uh, I'll come to you, uh, Sora. Uh, you are part of a very exciting uh, auto company uh, in, in two wheelers, which is doing a lot of new things. Technology is now at the heart of the auto sector. Absolutely. I mean, it's going to soon transform itself, uh, you know, sort of irrevocably now. Uh, what are the key risks you're saying, like he mentioned, uh, you know, what are the key risks you are already uh, grappling with and uh, how are you tackling the technology-led risks uh, and we'll come to different aspects of it during the conversation but how are you looking at it from a broader spectrum? 
So uh, as uh, Sundar mentioned, I guess uh, you know, manufacturing has now changed to digital transformation. That's that's the key change. Now the risk is more holistic. Uh, it's 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 not resting only in your manufacturing processes or in sales processes or in supply processes. It's it's holistic. Uh, if you see anything to do, anything which impacts your sales, traces all the all its uh, you know you, you can trace it back to your quality system, your manufacturing system, your supply systems. So it's, it's, it all works together. Also, if you see what, what is changing now, the way you're selling is also changing. Earlier technology in, in a manufacturing uh, company used to be only automation, you know, the, uh, IoT, stuff like that. Now the entire sales process is getting digitized. Uh, for example, we recently launched a, a, a very premium product and the bookings were only open online. There's no sales happening at on your in your uh, brick and mortar stores. So that brings about, since everything is connected and also there is a lot of data transmission happening between the vehicle and, and, and your machine. So cyber security is probably now the biggest threat. Privacy is another risk, which is, which is becoming more and more important. It is also a regulatory risk now, you know, a lot of regulation is, is coming around, around privacy. So, and, and also since we are global uh, operators, Global regulations also apply to us. So yeah, so I would bucketize it to privacy and cybersecurity as our key focus areas. Uh, so then, uh, I mean, he's, he's actually hit the nail on the head because privacy and cybersecurity are the key risks which any uh, manufacturing company or any company these days which is going through a digital transformation journey will face. Then there is this new animal called generative AI. Uh, you know, that while it is a very, very big uh, plus point for a lot of manufacturing companies, a lot of companies across the board, and we've in fact in business today had a full issue, whether it is a boon or a bane. You know, we've said that friend or foe is what we asked about AI. Uh, and opinion is divided, as you well know. How is uh, AI going to, across the board for your clients, particularly in the manufacturing sector, how is it changing the game? And we'll come to the risk also as well. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, the opinion is still divided. Uh, there are naysayers, as many as there are uh, people who uh, really think that it's going to add a lot of value. And time will only tell in terms of what eventually it's going to add in terms of value. But having said that, at a conceptual level, if we really look at it, uh, it's the data sets that actually matter. And it's your ability to extract information and value from the, that data set that matters. So the, the, the value that we actually extract from it is dependent on us. If we believe that we can think out of the box and use generative AI to be able to perform tasks and activities, which are probably repetitive in nature, which are probably predictable in nature, then we we'll harness value out of it. But if we stand on the other side and say that, look, why do I need to go back and share my information? Why do I need to use this new technology? Like it happens for any new technology that comes in, you will only see the risk associated with it and then the threat associated with it and therefore you will not use it. So that's that's really how, uh, you know, how the industry is really looking at it. I think having said that, uh, you know, I come from the risk standpoint uh, of, of, you know, these new technologies, including cybersecurity and privacy. I think there are two cardinal principles. Sorry. The first one is around the fact that whatever you may wish to do when it comes to risk management, whether it's cybersecurity or whether it's privacy, it needs to have a clear ownership from the board and the CEO with adequate funding. Right? Uh, and that is the most important thing, uh, both ownership and the funding, not one against the other. And the second one is if the first one has happened, then come and embrace these principles of cybersecurity early in the game at a design stage so that one is able to arrive at solutions that help you transform, that help you rethink your overall risk posture, and that also help you in terms of better automation. Right? So these two cardinal principles for anything are, are really applicable. And I think finally it comes down to the culture in the organization. If the culture is very control oriented to say that, look, we will control what's actually happening and that's how we address risk, then it probably is, is going to be a little bit of a challenge.
if the if the culture is a lot more about let's take it head on and let's embrace what's coming in front of us and identify the sweet spots for opportunities for us then probably you will generate value for yourself and value for your customers true uh, you know you have some of the biggest clients uh, biggest companies as clients uh, of uh, pwc now are you witnessing uh, this change this this entire culture change uh, of embracing and yet keeping the guardrails intact are you witnessing that or is it just a race to who you know i i also notice even as a journalist a bit of everybody wants to be a part of this ai revolution but there are these risks there are these guardrails but are you witnessing some of that because that's really where the risk lies right yeah so i think at this point in time it is uh you know it's moved from knowledge sharing into deeper conversations to say what is it mean for us mm-hmm. right when does it move from a conversation to a conversion of an idea and implementation is to be watched out for so we are at that stage really at this point in time uh some of the larger organizations who have a better appetite to consume uh, any pitfalls into their business model and move ahead are moving faster right uh and some of the smaller ones are probably looking at it in terms of a wait and watch so that's really how the the whole industry is kind of divided uh, so rab you are again a large auto company a large two wheeler maker uh, global uh, so uh, you talked about revolution uh, regulations you talked about the various pitfalls in the uh, data privacy space what about ai how how is hero motor cop Uh, embracing ai and how are they uh, guarding against the uh, possible risks so at the moment i would use uh, say that it's cautious optimism uh, we are uh, we we know where it can help us for example in our customer experience uh, you know processes in our uh, you know manufacturing processes also earlier you know we've just moved from robotics that used to be the big thing you know and and you've implemented it and now suddenly it's it's much more than that so uh, i guess it's early days we we know where it can help us and 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 we are also recognizing the risk at the moment you know it's it's uh, the risk with ai are in the unknown unknowns uh, domain uh, because it's it's still early days so yeah uh, i guess it's work in progress but we know where it can help us it can help us in our customer experience it can help us in our manufacturing processes in our quality processes but uh, early days is what is what i can say uh, but equally you know while technology could be you know you need those guardrails like you said of course we of course also use technology for a uh, you know to to guard against risk how yeah. is technology being used that you know for instance to guard against the risks and ensure the brand promise the brand proposition remains intact Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, for for uh, guarding against risk, again, what what you're automating, you're also actually also monitoring. So that is where uh, you know, uh, and again, what you automate well, it also gives you a leverage. So uh, for risk, you know, risk also is an opportunity. So companies which manage those well will 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 uh, reap its benefit. So yeah. So what we're trying to do is wherever we're doing a development, for example, any app we're developing, our our customer centric processes we're developing. we are guarding uh, those apps for again against these privacy risks the cyber security risks and again ensuring a, a seamless customer experience that is our our forte where whereby you know the customer experience gets enhanced but of course the data gets protected the the risk of uh, leakages uh, is managed and that's what we're trying to do and that's a constant uh, effort right that is a constant as effort as you go online like you said your latest uh, products are all being sold online absolutely that's a huge uh, opportunity but at the same time it's true risk. so for example uh, you know i'll uh, you know when when you're developing something we use what we call the secure development life cycle we have a sock implemented so we have we are uh, you know again we have analytics implemented we have uh, listening tools implemented for example uh, brand is also a lot of brand gets gets distracted over social media these days exactly. so social we have media, seen some instances we have seen a lot of instances and one bad uh, you know article or bad news can can distract your brand so social media for us is very important now we are listening we are doing we are listening to social media chatter we are trying to you know grab or 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 uh, you know it, imbibe what is what people are saying and then accordingly uh, you know implement those in our processes is that where ai also helps you it is it is so it is again i said just being started being used but but we are hoping ai will greatly help us because it will it will give us protections predictive analytics for sales forecasting uh, you know customer behavior 
is is something where where AI is going to we uh, we hope AI will help us uh, you know define those uh, aspects. You know, one thing, uh, uh, Sundar, which a lot of companies need to do as we move to this very very exciting new phase of Industry 4.0 is about skilling. Now, uh, mismatch of skills is again a huge risk, which a lot of your companies, I'm sure, would be also talking about as you talk to them. How are you addressing that, and what are the companies doing uh, as far as you are concerned? Yeah, so I think this is a very uh, this is a very important topic, not just at the ground level for organizations, but understanding of risk right at the board level is also a skilling that one needs to kind of undertake. Right? If you look at the composition of the board, and I'll start from there, largely it's chartered accountants who understand business well, who understand finance well, maybe a couple of advisors here and there thrown in who understand technology well. Right? But do people understand the whole language of risk and what the opportunity that risk brings? is something which is uh, which is important and what they expect is they expect us to communicate to them and de-jargonize everything and tell them in very simple terms because they're very very smart in picking up these things so that's one area that you know we're trying to work on in terms of communicating in a very simple language to the boards and the management so that's one the second is that there are certain practices as an employee that one needs to follow and it's based on a policy, it's based on a guideline or whatever it is. But I think the moment you come down and say that you have to do a certain thing in a, in a controlled way, human tendency is to do exactly the opposite. But if you tell a nice story around it, right, in terms of how it really matters, then probably people appreciate it. I can just quote an example of one of the large pharma clients, in fact. They realize that the biggest risk that they have is around their 3,500 distributors mm -hmm. and their families who probably are on the internet with a lot of access to social media and they are sharing a lot of data with these distributors for you know for their business purposes. So they called us in to run a full program on training their entire family on what is it that needs to be adopted for secure internet usage, mm -hmm. right? So there are various things that one could really do, but uh, really there's no end to this because yes. the moment you skill, there's a new technology that comes in, there's a new risk Disruption. associated. Disruption has become a you know, so, daily grind, right? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's so to say, I mean, it's it's as exciting as it can be. That's true. Uh, so that, I mean, coming back to this whole issue of skilling, also when you're uh, looking at a customer uh, base, which is so widespread across the world, in fact, uh, uh, how are you looking at getting your sales force in particular yeah. uh, adapt to newer technologies which are sort of disrupting technologies? How is that uh, going to play out? That yes, that's, a, that's something which we, which we think about a lot in, in our regular conversations. Also, what, what again, the entire upskilling uh, of, from, again, you know, we as a company also sell a range of products in various right. segments. So our sales force also needs to get trained. Now, for example, we have recently launched um, an EV. Uh, uh, scooter. So again, how you going to sell, and uh, you know uh, that uh, product is is very different from how you going to sell a commuter uh, motorcycle or a scooter. So this entire process of upskilling uh, sales force is something we have called we uh, in our company have something called the Hero Academy. Mm -hmm. So that is where we have uh, you know processes to to upskill the sales force, the service folks also, because uh, that's where the technology changes. Mm -hmm. so for example, this and the technology change from BS4 to BS6. Now you have new uh, fuel norms coming in. You have EV coming in. We now have uh, the hardware which is uh, mm -hmm. coming. So all these products require a different skill set to sell and service, plus uh, the digitization. So what we are we are using digitization a lot in upskilling our sales forces and our service folks. Um, for example, we are giving them tabs uh, as a as a tool to sell. Uh, we have uh, you know uh, screens in our showrooms to try and help uh, you know explain features. Connected. Everything is connected, mm -hmm. so uh, data is is connected and, and information which is going into these uh, devices is also uh, you know managed by us and connected. That's how we use it. So good, you mentioned Harley because that brings me to the next question. When you have international partners of the likes of Harley and yeah. others, yeah. Uh, 
do you also have uh, sort of engaged with them uh, to understand their best practices on the risk management front, on the technology front, and how you can sort of uh, dovetail that into your Yes, brand? absolutely. So what happens is that it's, it's, it's a collaborative approach. Uh, you know, again, our mission is create collaborative fire. So, so that's part of, of our DNA now. So, uh, yeah, there is a lot of exchange of ideas, exchange of thoughts, and also uh, making it fit for purpose. Now, what probably works for Harley in, in a particular geography may not work for us here. So try and see what is what works for us and then uh, uh, implement that. Uh, so then, I mean, uh, we are coming down to the sort of end of our time here in, in terms of this conversation. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, as you engage with this plethora of clients across industries, but with, uh, you know, with this whole disruption uh, industry to 4.0 in mind, what are the three or two or three things you are telling each of them uh, to keep in mind as the top priorities to engage and ensure that uh, you know we the, they, they get the best from this yeah so i think the first thing is uh, you know uh, as we have multiple technologies coming in and as companies are going through this whole transformation exercise uh, we are really talking to them to say that let's go back to the drawing board on risk management uh, this this uh, you know the whole approach of a uh, of a risk register which is static in nature reviewed once in a year is passive Mm -hmm. It's not going to work with Austin. So let's go back to the drawing board and understand the value chain that you're operating and put the risks associated with that particular value chain. That's the first. Uh, the second thing that's actually coming up is to is is that much of all of this can be solved using technology, but if you use it and if you know how to use it well, right? Uh, so we are talking to clients to understand where is it that they can plug in technology to make things work a little faster, uh, where they can really use it for predictive analysis yes. and where they can really use it uh, for better planning and then address risks in that manner. That's the second aspect of it. The third aspect of it, which is uh, in fact in these days uh, the most favorite for us is around scale, right? Uh, right from the board and the CEOs die right down to the people down below. Because that's when you really build a culture in the organization. So once the transformation exercise is complete, the culture is what takes you ahead. Absolutely. Right? So these are three things that we have to do. So closing thoughts from you, uh, uh, Surav, on how this new look, you know, in a new and uh, you know dynamic environment is going to go forward. I think we will be a lot leaner, sharper, faster. Um, and the mantra now is change gears. So uh, we, we are uh, moving ahead with a lot of speed while ensuring that our, our controls and our risks are managed. Uh, so again, what, 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 we've, uh, what we will strive for is, is uh, quality, speed and of course customer satisfaction, but managing our risks at the same time. And, our, and for us, I think what we, what we are, our thought process is that if we manage our risks better, we will get a premium for that, both from our customers and our investors. So risk management, but yet taking advantage of all the opportunities this new world provides. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.